The following program is a production of HEW Entertainment and contains views, opinions, commentaries, and content that may offend some subscribers of this show. Listener's discretion is advised. It's that time once again for HEW Entertainment Radio. And that's all I got to say about that. Hosted by Jonathan Clark. The beat! The man! You gotta beat the man! Whoa! Be sure to join us in the live chat room during the show. Hulkamania is running wild like it's never ran before. Call us on one of our request lines. If you live in the United States, call us at 1 641 985 7800, box number 3729288. If you're from Canada and would like to call us, call us from 1 647 724 4194, box number 3729288. Long distance charges may apply in some areas. I've been the World Heavyweight Champion 10 times! Or you can always drop us a line at MySpace, myspace.com backslash H-E-W Entertainment. And you will rest in peace! Emailing us works for you too. Email us H-E-W-Wrestling at Hotmail.com. I am a wrestling god! J-B-L- J-B-L. And now, without any further ado, here is your host of H-E-W Entertainment Radio on the official website of H-E-W Entertainment, Jonathan Law. The champ is here! Comment on our video blogs, join the conversation, and like us. So, so what, what are you, you waiting, waiting for? Log on and listen now. Don't miss out on any of the action. Download our app on the App Store, Google Play, and the official website of HEW Entertainment. Once you've downloaded and installed it, you'll get caught up on news, YouTube videos, and more. Download it now.
they were definitely, in my mind, a very powerful group, just as powerful as the Four Horsemen, the New World Order, perhaps. And if I can make a recommendation and throw one your way, the destruction of the Shield is a great representation of what the Shield meant to the WWE through their days spent in NXT, making their way up through the ranks, coming eventually the WWE by the end of 2012. From 2012 to 2014, they were amazing, and they're just as amazing as singles competitors. But I'm really pissed off over the results of a WWE.com poll that named Seth Rollins to be the most talented out of the trio, and that was chosen by the WWE fans through .com and the app. I really don't have a response to that because I can't believe that fans would choose someone like Seth Rollins over Dean Ambrose, who I am a big fan of, really big fan of him because he resembles Brian Pillman, and I was a huge fan of Brian Pillman back in the 90s, even though the incident with the gun may have went too far, I was really a big fan of Brian Pillman. Roman Reigns also has the size of a Batista or a Brock Lesnar to make it uh, in the wrestling business, although he's not put over that way. Maybe that really influenced wrestling fans to choose Rollins over the other two S.H.I.E.L.D. members as their favorite and the most talented out of the S.H.I.E.L.D. I really don't know, uh, but he's WWE champion and he's remaining champion. He's escaping all the time with the belt and the fallout of WrestleMania 31. He's defended it several times in Fatal 4 matches, one-on-one -on -one encounters. He finds different ways to escape every title defense and it's really irritating me. Why is this happening? I can only come up with a conclusion, draw it, that, that Triple H and Stephanie have convinced Seth Rollins that he's the future of the WWE in his own mind. I don't necessarily agree with the views of Triple H and Stephanie because I think there are so many incredible talents in the WWE who could have been given that distinction. Why they were never given that chance, I really don't know. Daniel Bryan's push was obviously killed because of his major injury, his second major injury in less than one year. That is a downer uh, for Daniel Bryan and more so for his fans. Can't tell you how bad I feel for all of you who were supporters and fans of Daniel Bryan. Really excited he was coming back for WrestleMania 31 in 2015. Thought he was going to go for the championship and they broke him down to the Intercontinental title division. Put him in the ladder match for the Intercontinental title featuring several talented individuals. Daniel Bryan came out on top and he got a couple of title defenses in and I don't even think he got a chance to defend it on pay-per-view. If he did, he only got a chance to defend it once against the former champion Wade Barrett and then he had to forfeit the title. I don't know what it is about Daniel Bryan and title defenses before he gets a chance he goes down uh, with a major injury. He's a talented individual. Alberto Del Rio was a great wrestler that was with WWE for a number of years. He was released and sent down to Luchador Wrestling in Mexico. It's unbelievable how many talented wrestlers we have. Wade Barrett is another one. King Barrett now can't really say I agree with the direction of his character, but why? Is Seth Rollins carrying the new talent initiative? I really don't know. Maybe because it was John Cena and Randy Orton for years, and people are getting tired of seeing John Cena and Randy Orton always on top. That'd be the reason why John Cena was U.S. champion and why Randy Orton was just the number one contender, pushing the new talent initiative superstars in a more prominent direction, just as he was pushed a number of years ago. If you go back nearly 10 years, but of course he was a member of Evolution, a very powerful group that I left out of the scenario between the Shield and factions of the past. He was a very prominent member of Evolution. Triple H realized his potential, and Triple H pushed him along with Batista, and now Randy Orton's doing the same uh, for the newer crop of WWE superstars, including Seth Rollins. That'd be the reason why they had an incredible match at WrestleMania 31, and it's still talked about in the fallout of WrestleMania, and why Rollins went in to cash the briefcase like he did in the fallout of WrestleMania in the main event, changing it from a one-on-one -on -one originally advertised match with Lesnar and Reigns to a triple threat match which I will never agree with. Yes, it was unpredictable that Seth Rollins was going to do it in the way that he did it. It wasn't unpredictable he was going to cash in the briefcase, but how he did it was very unpredictable. Can't say I really agree with that because I think WWE are victims of false advertising, but the Money in the Bank contract allows whoever holds it to get away with it. So at the end of the day, it really isn't false advertising. That's what it comes down to. But I feel as if we were victims of false advertising because in the entire match between Reigns and Lesnar, Lesnar pretty much dominated, taking Roman Reigns to Suplex City, bad-mouthing Roman Reigns throughout the entire match, having a counter for everything Reigns hit Lesnar with, although it wasn't really much. And uh, I think four F5s did in Roman Reigns before Rollins came out and did what he did. Can't say I really agree with it, and that's why I refer to Seth Rollins as a piece of shit because really that's all. Uh, Seth Rollins is uh, when you have so many incredible names that could be carrying the company as champion Bray Wyatt is someone who's in the back of my mind you know Bray Wyatt by October of 2013 
I had predicted that he was going to be the man. He was going to be champion by October, the fall of 2013. That was two years ago. Nothing was ever done with Bray Wyatt. He was never given a singles championship like the Intercontinental or U.S. Championship, which he could have easily been given, if not the championship. And that really let me down. Dolph Ziggler's push was killed after what happened to him at the end of the year. Of course, he was the sole survivor on Team Cena when Team Cena went up against the authority. Big Show Kane, Triple H, of course, Seth Rollins. And uh, what happened there, of course, Dolph Ziggler was being pushed in the direction of being champion. What happened there, I really don't know. A loss of faith in Dolph Ziggler and his work ethic, who had been with WWE for a number of years, the only sole surviving member of the original Spirit Squad uh, from 2006 when all the other Spirit Squad members were let go. Kenny Dykstra and Onward were let go from the five-band faction of the Spirit Squad. They kept Dolph Ziggler because of his potential, obviously going to do something with him. Uh, near the end of 2014, early on in 2015, it was going to be kickstarted, but something happened there, uh, and his push was killed. They're ruining Wade Barrett from BNZ, the Bad News Barrett segment, of course, making fun. A shot at TMZ, they 